And then obviously, every year you'd have that same kind of visa potential. Every year you'd have that kind of jobs. And then you have job growth because you know you do have some companies. I mean, we have plenty of startups that we funded that have grown. Huge. You know, first year they exit the year 10, 15, 20 people, then 50 people, then hundreds of people. And there's lots of good stories of companies you know that have within five years grown to be 500 people, 1,000 people. Um, and then obviously, if you have a home run like a company like Google, you could have you know, 20, 30, 50,000 people over a decade. And that's so, what I was going to say. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I mean, obviously, companies that are venture backed have a very high, in relation to other startup companies, very high success rate out there. So you're talking about the highest quality companies, the highest quality jobs, skilled labor here, innovation. We have to have this. Go ahead. Uh, I, want, I know you've got, do you have? Um, information out there about some sort of maybe some some metrics or, or some projections of of how many jobs this might uh, what kind of impact we might have in terms of job growth in the economy in general. Yeah, I think I think at at a, at a sort of a, a long term macro level, it's pretty speculative. But in the short term, I think what we're saying basically is imagine a scenario where you're, you're getting five to twenty five thousand new jobs a year, and that's compounding annually every year. Here. So. You know, it's sort of an indefinite potential growth. Obviously, some of the companies won't be successful, so you'll have some mortality. And there's provisions in the in the bills if you know if if in a two year period the company doesn't succeed, the entrepreneur could start another company and raise additional funds and keep trying. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, the great ones, you know, the first thing they do doesn't work, but they keep trying. That's the great thing. About That's it, baby. <laughs> Um, and uh, and then if the company becomes successful, obviously the visa uh, the visa renews. But I you know I think over uh, you know over a decade you know you could be talking of hundreds of thousands of jobs. Wow. And the other thing which I think is really important, and we've experienced it here in Boulder where I live, is entrepreneurial communities really feed on themselves. And part of the brilliance of Silicon Valley, you know, is that Silicon Valley has been in the works for 40, 50 years. Right, I mean, it's it's not something that happened in the last decade. It's something that you know, in the '60s and the '70s and the '80s, and it's had its ups and downs. And it's had some, you know, I remember, you know, after the internet bubble in 2001, 2002, Silicon there. Valley over, right? Yeah. Only Silicon Valley had a couple of tough years, and the resilience of the entrepreneurs, the infrastructure, and the angel investors, and all the people around. And then in Boulder, what we've had over the last 15 years, I moved here about 15 years ago, and I invest all around the U.S. Um, but I've chosen to live here and have uh, we have some companies that we've invested in here. It's an incredibly vibrant entrepreneurial community um, that every year now, even though we've had ups and downs, it's continuing to grow and move forward. And even with, for example, the recent financial crisis, in the entrepreneurial community here, it wasn't really a material impact on anybody because everybody was just building their businesses. Yeah, if you had 150 people and you had some big companies that were your customers, you know, your growth slowed down for a year or two. But if you're, you know, starting up your next company, there was capital available. People figured out how to get their businesses started, and there were other entrepreneurs around you to help that you out. Be successful, and I think that's part of the dynamic here. Is we need more entrepreneurs in this country, not less. Got it. That's exactly it. I love that book by Anthony Saxinian, Regional Advantage. It talks about why, yeah, why Silicon Valley work vis-a-vis -vis Route 120. I mean, they both work, but Silicon Valley, you know, really, really work. And that's what this is. It's it's having innovation, having entrepreneurs that help each other out, that go down and talk to each other after work and kind of share little problems and stuff and having that, that venture capital, that's true venture capital. We need that innovation here. What Brad is saying is if we have these kinds of people here and this kind of growth and this kind of pro-capitalist, pro-startup environment, it's going to make America do better, have more money, be more innovative, and be more resistant to the ups and downs uh, in, 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 in world market shocks. I think this is great. How do we sign up for this? How do people learn more? They go to startupvisa.com, but also, what do we need to do to get this passed? How many votes are we, do we need? How many votes are we short? Who do we hit up to make this happen? So, the couple of things that people that support this can do, one is, sort of very simply, if you go to startupvisa.com, We've actually set up a mechanism where it's very easy for you to write to your representatives, um, and it's through a, 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 a thing called AtGov, which is a Twitter mechanism. So you literally go on, you say what your zip code is, you you know you only have to type 140 characters or less, and it'll it'll produce the appropriate written documentation to whoever your House and Senate representatives are. So that's on the side. Should be obvious what to do. Awesome. Thing two is we're very actively focused right now on getting co-sponsors for the bills. 
So to the extent that uh, you know you have relationships with people either on the Senate side or the House side in your states, um, that's really helpful to start to tell them about it. Hey, I heard about it. Contact them directly. Encourage them. And to the extent um, that there's a real conversation that can be had. Um, I'm happy to be involved in that. My email is brad at feld.com. I'm easy to get in touch with. Send me a note, and I'd be happy to provide, whether it's material or phone call or connections or whatever, happy to do that. The third is we're also actively now talking to other constituencies. One that's a very interesting one is university presidents and deans. Oh, yeah. Many uh, universities, especially ones that have a lot of research associated with them, uh, are very interested in this kind of activity. Um, many universities, you know, in the last 10, 15 years have been sort of new sources or 20 years, new sources of innovation on lots of vectors. There's a lot of R&D activity uh, going on. And so to the extent that you have a relationship with somebody at, again, across the country, because we're really trying to get broad-based representation. This is not a, 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 a East Coast, you know, entrepreneurship, Massachusetts thing. It's not a West Coast, Silicon Valley thing. It's everywhere in the U.S., I believe for a long time that there's probably, you know, 50 to 100 great entrepreneurial cities in the U.S. Um, and you know, the obviously the biggest is Silicon Valley. But when you start to get into, the, you know, past the first 10 or 15, there's so much opportunity in the U.S. to grow the entrepreneurial ecosystems. Oh yeah. So involved in that, um, uh, you know, reaching out to people sort of in the community. Uh, in the, you know, whether it's in the governor's office or whether it's in local university, again, happy to try to help in ways I can help via, again, email me, bradfelt.com. Those are the short-term things. Right now, um, you know, the political uh, machinery, one of the things we tried to do with this is make it completely grassroots. So we haven't spent any money. We have no lawyers. Uh, we have no... Um, we don't have a political action committee. We have no lobbyists. It's just a bunch of entrepreneurs and VCs and software guys saying, this is a good thing, let's do this. And so the more noise people can make, if you have a blog, write a blog post about it, tell your friends about it, tweet out something and put hashtag start a visa in it, all that stuff is what we're doing. And we've been really pleased with the amount of positive response in the last six months. And I think one of the things we'd like to demonstrate, try hopefully if we're successful, is that something that is uniformly a good idea is fundamentally nonpartisan. Totally. Everybody wants more jobs. Everybody wants better economic growth. Everybody wants more entrepreneurship. It's not a democratic thing. It's not a republic. Every American wants it. that we don't have to go through sort of this nonsense of a process to try to have something happen. I agree. Good ideas out there and forcefully make a lot of noise about it. So that's something I encourage, you know, anybody that's interested uh, in this to do. Just make noise about it and, and uh, we'll continue to build momentum from there. I think it's great. I love it. I love this idea. I'm super conservative, almost libertarian. I know most of Silicon Valley and a lot of the boulders are very liberal. And that's what I'm saying. What Brad's saying is right. This is for everybody. This is smart. This is innovation. This is American as, as apple pie or anything else. And I'm all for it. We can make a lot of noise and we're going to get some people out there. We're going to talk directly to the people that we have jacked in there, all of our politician friends, all of our media friends, and we're going to get people fired up on this. And we appreciate it. And we thank you for the time. And we thank you for getting involved in this and bringing this in incredible opportunity to America. John, awesome for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it.